and welcome to Modelling Misadventures. And in today's video, we're going to carry on with the construction of Thunderbird 4. In the last video, we showed how this part was scaled up from files downloaded from the internet. Now, I've printed out all the other parts for this model now, and I'll just show you what they look like. Well, here are all the parts laid out, and I've got to say, this is an impressive model. I'm really liking the quality of these prints and the detail that's on these files. And it looks as though it's going to go together beautifully. So we've got all the necessary details on here. You can see, you know, we've got the light box here and the tool, tool tray. We're going to have the light box arms here. Uh, lettering on the side. I'm going to fill that in and use uh, vinyl lettering. But if you didn't want to do that, you could just fill that in with some black modeling clay. We've got an interior. So there's a console here and a back, a back wall, uh, a seat. And then here we've got these uh, turbine exhaust and motors. So it looks amazing. Now there are some things worth pointing out about this kit and I just want to show those because I think they're they're quite interesting. So the bottom of Thunderbird 4 is this big block here and you can see it's got these four little holes in here and they actually give you these little files for the circular discs that will that will fit in there like that and then they will engage with the holes in the bottom of here so that you get a perfect alignment. And that then gives you the rear end of Thunderbird 4. And then on these side pieces here, you can see it's got these little um, discs protruding out. And that is to allow you to line up these side thrusters and they will go on there and fit into those little slots. So that is a really nice feature of the construction to make sure that you get everything aligned properly. Now this part here is designed to be printed in one piece, but uh, it was actually too big for my printer to handle when it was stood up vertically. So I had to slice it in half on the slicer and I've, and I've uh, printed it in two separate halves. Now in order to make that align properly, I've printed out a little cylinder that will slot in there and allow me to put the two halves together. So this little ring will go in there and then the other half will fit on there. Again, a simple 3D printing technique just to make sure the alignment is right. Now that will then uh, stick onto the side of um, Thunderbird 4. Uh, that will go into there. And then we've got the, the uh, engine, um, whatever it is, nozzle. Isn't that great? Now, at the back of these engine nozzles, they provide you with the little motor insert. So that's going to go in there. And doesn't that look great? Now, there's an interesting feature of this part here, and that is these grooves here. Now, this is a trick that 3D printers often use. And these grooves here are where the red stripes were on Thunderbird 4. And instead of having to paint the red stripes on, what 3D printers will do is provide you with something like this that you could actually print in a separate color. So the idea here is that you would print this part in red and you would print this part in yellow. And then when you slot that into there, whichever way around it goes, um, that would then be your red line. Now I haven't decided what to do about these. I think I'm going to actually try painting these red first and then slotting them in because they are a very tight fit and I think they will substitute for the red line without having to mask it. Obviously the rest of it is going to have to be painted yellow. Here's the console in the, the cabin. And again, I've got to say, if you compare it to uh, shots from the actual TV show. It's pretty close. There was a monitor here and lots of dials here. There are a couple of things on here. 
So that's actually a pretty good representation. And the rear wall of the cabin, uh, we've got the uh, exit door represented here, little console here. There's a few details missing off here, but overall it's not bad. Now, one thing that wasn't quite right is this seat here. On the real Thunderbird 4, there was a ridge seat, but there weren't as many ridges as this. So I've actually redesigned this and reprinted it. And this is my version now, and it's just got the three ridge back um, on the chair. And that appears to be what you see in the real Thunderbird 4. Now, there were a couple of parts provided in the kit, which are these, these are called cabin wall one and cabin wall two, and they're designed to go down the sides of the cabin. I've looked at a lot of photo photographs of Thunderbird 4. I can't find anything that these actually equate to. So I'm not gonna put those in. I'm just gonna have a plain cabin wall, but I have just made a couple of extra features. This is the auto lock door, which goes uh, into the airlock so that Gordon can leave the submarine. And then there's this console that goes on the back wall, which has sort of a TV screen in it. Uh, and that it didn't come with the kit, so I've just designed that and uh, printed that as well. Now, one part of Thunderbird 4 that you see uh, regularly in the TV show is the steering wheel. And this is a steering wheel that comes with the kit and it's not uh, accurate. It's not the right shape. So um, I'm gonna have to redesign that when it comes to finishing the model off. So this is what the model looks like, roughly assembled. It's going to be great, isn't it? Look at the quality of those parts. I am so impressed with that. There's the front end and we can see into the cockpit. Very nice. Now, one thing this model doesn't come with is a cabin window. And in the instructions, because this is designed to be made as a much smaller model, it says just use the top of a uh, drink bottle to make the curved window. Now this is much bigger uh, and I've never actually attempted to make a canopy or a curved window myself, but I've been looking it up online and I'm going to have a go at uh, trying to uh, mold a plastic bottle or a sheet of acetate around a mold that I'd made. Uh, so first of all, in order to do that, I needed to make a mould of this windscreen. Now, I'm going to do this by trying to print one out on the 3D printer. And I'll show you how I, uh, how I did that next. So I found another model of Thunderbird 4, this time on Thingiverse. This is a one-piece uh, model, but it has a canopy included within it. So we can import that model onto the printer. You can see it's quite big, but now I'm going to cut it up so that I can just get the canopy. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this model 90 degrees. And then I'm going to use the cut function of this slicer to slice off the back of the window. I can cut that and just keep the upper part. And now we've got rid of the bottom section. Now I'm going to rotate it back. And I'm going to cut it again. And again, I'm just going to keep the top section. Now that is the window scaled to the size of the model. So I'm going to have a go at printing that and see what it looks like. So I've printed off a couple of these just to give you the idea. One's a little bit smaller. And this is just a tester to show that we've got approximately the right shape and size. But obviously for the mold, it'll have to be slightly bigger so that the window fits flush against these edges. So I've made the same thing, but slightly bigger. This one won't fit in, but it has the correct measurements on it. So in a future video, I'm gonna 
show how I attempt to make a clear perspex window using this mould. That might end up being a disaster. So watch this space. So I'm really excited about this model. I think it's going to be fantastic. And just to get the appetite going, here's a couple of little models of Thunderbird 4. That is the one that came with Thunderbird 2 in the Corgi set. And this is a much more detailed one from Japan. That's a beautiful little model of Thunderbird 4. So I hope mine's going to be as good as that when it's finished. So that's it for now. Um, the next stage of this build is going to be a very laborious, which is sanding down all the plastic parts. And then I'll be priming them and starting the paint job. But for now, that's it for this video. And I'll see you next time on Modelling Misadventures. Thank you.